Hi, and welcome to the first ever Feedback Friday. It's the 8th of February 2013, and I'm Tammy Bell, the co-founder of the award-winning community website MoveToNZ.com. Now we get lots of prospective migrants asking us questions, so today we have licensed and qualified advisor Mike Bell here to answer some of them for you. Our first question is from Raj in India, and he asks, which expressions of interest is Immigration New Zealand currently selecting? Hey Raj, thanks for your question. Yes, expressions of interest or EOIs are the first part of the process in the skilled migrant category, which is the residence program most people use to get into New Zealand. Um, each fortnight, the Immigration Department pull between 550 or 600 of the EOIs out of the pool, have a look at them. If they agree with the number of points the applicants claimed, then you'll get your ITA or your invitation to apply, which is the first step in actually lodging an application. So the first important point is you need at least 100 points to put in an expression of interest. Um, and if you can claim over 140 points or 140 points or more, I should say, then um, you're, autom you're automatically selected for um, checking. So it's between those two numbers that we're looking at today. Um, through 2013 so far, there have been three selections uh, each fortnight. and uh, the first group of about 360 people selected are people who are claiming 140 points or more and also have a job offer. So by job offer I mean a suitable offer of skilled work in New Zealand that they're qualified for. So we can go into a bit more detail of what that means later on, but a job offer, a job offer in New Zealand. Uh, about 100 each fortnight of the number selected have over 140 points, but they don't have a job offer. So they've managed to get 140 points or more without a job offer. The third group, um, between 100 and 200 each fortnight, depending on the number selected, um, have made it over the 100 points and have a job offer in New Zealand. So they haven't quite made it to 140 points, but because they've got points for a job offer, a suitable job offer in New Zealand, they're also selected. And those three groups through 2013 have been the only ones selected so far. Last year, 2012, there was a fourth group which we often saw selected. And those were people who had at least six years work experience in an area of long-term skill shortage. So we haven't seen any of those yet in 2013, but I wouldn't be surprised if we do at some point. Um, so that's the, the four groups so far. Um, looking a bit deeper into the uh, selections, about three quarters of the people selected are in New Zealand. So that means a quarter are offshore or outside New Zealand. And uh, about 80% have points for a job offer in their EOI. So four out of five people have a job offer that are being selected. About 83% or a little bit over 83% um, are claiming over 140 points. So most of the EOIs that are being selected are high scoring and include points for an offer of work in New Zealand. Generally, um, migrants uh, get confused about this because they think, well, I can score over 100 points. My EOI should be selected, so I'll put one in. Um, and I often get asked by people, oh, I've got 125 points. I don't have a job offer in New Zealand. I don't have work experience in a long-term skill shortage area. Should I put in an EOI? The answer is invariably no, because although you make it into the requirements, you're very unlikely to be selected. So generally, if you can't claim 140 points, um, you don't have uh, an offer of skilled work in New Zealand, and you don't have at least six years work experience in an area of long-term skill shortage, your EOI is unlikely to be uh, selected. If in doubt, you can always contact me or another licensed immigration advisor to get uh, some personal feedback on your position. I hope that answers your question. Thanks, Raj. Helen from Scotland's question is about how long the residency process takes for skilled migrant category. Hey, Helen, thank you for your question. So this is an important one for a lot of people and the answer really differs. So how long is the process? Um, Generally, for most people, it takes about a year, but it can take as many as um, two years or longer, and I'll explain why. So walking through the process, the first step is the expression of interest. So that's you putting all the information you've got onto the online form, and that can take a while. You submit that. Usually, EOIs that are going to be selected are selected quite quickly. Um, so often the EOIs won't sit in the pool for very long, but they can sit in the pool for up to six months before they, they expire or lapse. If they're selected, uh, you'll normally receive a letter from the Immigration Department within a couple of weeks, and that's your ITA, your invitation to apply. You then have four months to get all your documents together, so 
a uh, bit of planning could go into that, but you have a four month slot. And then you put in the application, and that's when generally the statistics can start helping us work out how long it might take. So many of the New Zealand offices have uh, a target of clearing applications within nine months, so 90% within nine months. And usually most applications are going to be cleared between six and nine months, unless there's additional information they need, additional information comes to light. So for example, something that might affect your application comes to light, and the immigration department need to ask you about that. That can add a uh, an extra amount of time. Also, if there's a medical condition, it can take time getting specialist medical replies, um, reports uh, to support your position that you're not going to cost New Zealand a lot of money and support your application. So usually for most people, it's, it's around a year. It can take longer and it can actually take less. So for example, the, um, the rebuild of Christchurch residency applications, I understand, are being fast-tracked. So that means uh, they're trying to clear 90% within 60 days, which is hugely fast. Um, it is having a knock-on effect with other uh, residency applications. So the fast tracking of applications in Canterbury is adding, say for example, a couple of months onto non-rebuild residency applications. Uh, elsewhere around the world it can take longer also. Not all of the immigration offices are as um, heavily resourced as the New Zealand ones. So for example, it's my understanding that the New Delhi office um, you would normally wait about 12 months extra for the allocation of a case officer. So you're talking about an average of two years for, to go through the process. But in answer to your, in answer to answer your question uh, generally, talking about 12 months to go from from start to finish through the skill migrant category process. Hope that answers your question. So our last question for today is from Frank, who's from the US. He's asking if he's granted a work visa. Which visas would his wife and children be able to apply for? Hey Frank, thanks for your question. That's, that's a very important one. Whereas residency um, applies to the whole family, so it encompasses the whole family, work visas are for an individual. So what happens to your partner? What happens to your children? So the work visas, most people get a work visa under the essential skills category, which is a skilled job offer. Um, and that visa will be linked to an employer. So it'll actually have an employer's name on your visa. Your partner can get a, a work visa for the same length of time based on your partnership. You'll need to prove that you've been living together for at least 12 months and provide as much evidence as possible for that. But your partner can get a work visa um, for the same period of time and that's not linked to an employer. So that means they can work in pretty much any job. They can even potentially be self-employed. Your children also can get student visas for the same length of time. So that would make them effectively domestic students so they can go to school they can go to kindergarten, nursery, um, as if they were um, New Zealanders and they don't have to pay international fees. Sometimes we get very young children coming through, so infants, and they, they wouldn't, it wouldn't be suitable for them to have a student visa, so they can get a, a visitor's visa to accompany their parents. But um, to answer your question, yes, your partner can get a visa for the same length of time as, as your visa, and so can your children. Now that's all from us this week. Hope you enjoyed it. Now, if you have a question you'd like Mike Bell to answer, why not send it in to me at tammy.bell at movetonz.com. Now, you can send this in just as a general text email and I can read it out on your behalf. Or alternatively, why not send us your video question? See you next week. <laughs>